Farmers have been using molasses in livestock feed for generations. But is it really just a sweet treat or is it a valuable feed ingredient? Today, we're breaking down the real pros and cons of feeding molasses to livestock. We'll cover what makes it useful, the risks you should watch out for, and the best ways to feed it safely. By the end, you'll know whether molasses deserves a spot in your feeding program. Before we dive into the pros and cons, let's start with the basics. What exactly is molasses? Molasses is a thick, dark and sticky liquid that comes from processing sugarcane or sugar beets. After sugar is extracted, molasses is what's left behind. Instead of being wasted, farmers around the world use it as livestock feed. It's loaded with natural sugars, which makes it very sweet and highly digestible. Because of this, molasses is mainly used as a source of quick energy for animals. You'll often see it poured over rough feeds, like straw, or mixed into commercial feed pellets to improve taste and texture. In many countries where sugarcane is grown, like Brazil, India, or Australia, molasses is one of the cheapest energy sources available for cattle, sheep, and goats. In other areas, it might be more expensive because of transport costs. So, in short, molasses is a byproduct that turns waste from the sugar industry into a useful livestock feed. Now that we know what molasses is, let's look at why so many farmers add it to their livestock's diet. There are several advantages worth noting. First, animals love the sweet taste. By mixing molasses with dry, dusty or low quality feeds like straw and rough hay, farmers can encourage their animals to eat more. This is especially useful when animals might otherwise reject poor quality feed. Think of it like adding honey to oatmeal. Suddenly, it's much more appealing. Second, molasses is packed with simple sugars, mostly sucrose. These sugars are easy to digest and provide quick energy. That makes molasses especially helpful for working animals like oxen or horses, growing young animals, and dairy cows or ewes that need extra energy for milk production. Third, molasses acts like a natural glue. When it's mixed with powdered feed or mineral supplements, it holds everything together and prevents animals from picking out only the parts they like. It also reduces dust and feed loss from wind, making sure animals get the full balanced ration. Fourth, molasses can be cost-effective. In sugar-producing countries, it's often cheaper than grain as a source of energy. This makes it a practical way to increase calorie density without breaking the budget. Of course, in places far from sugar mills, transport costs can make it more expensive. Fifth, molasses isn't just sugar. It also contains minerals like potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and small amounts of iron and copper. While it won't replace a complete mineral program, it can help contribute to your animal's daily needs. Sixth, molasses is commonly combined with urea in ruminant diets. The sugars give rumen microbes quick energy, which helps them convert urea into protein. This makes the whole feeding system more efficient and supports better fiber digestion. Finally, in the feed industry, molasses is often added to commercial pellets. It helps hold them together, makes them less dusty, and improves overall durability. So when you buy livestock pellets, molasses has probably played a role in their production. So, molasses clearly offers some real benefits. It improves feed intake, provides quick energy, and can even save money in the right regions. But like any feed ingredient, it's not perfect. Next, let's talk about the risks and downsides of feeding molasses. Molasses is mostly sugar. It has very little protein, fat, calcium, or phosphorus. If you rely too heavily on it, the diet becomes unbalanced. Molasses should always be used as a supplement, 
not the main feed. For horses especially, molasses can be dangerous. Too much sugar can upset the gut and trigger laminitis, a painful hoof condition that can leave a horse permanently lame. Cattle can also develop laminitis, but usually only after acidosis occurs from eating too many fast fermenting feeds. In cattle, sheep and goats, feeding too much molasses at once can lower the pH in the rumen. This condition, called acidosis, kills off the good fiber digesting microbes. The result can be bloat, diarrhea, reduced feed efficiency, and in severe cases, death. Molasses is heavy, sticky, and hard to pump or mix. In cold climates, it can even solidify, meaning farmers may need heated tanks just to keep it flowing. It's not as easy to manage as dry feed ingredients. Another problem is pests. The sweet smell of molasses attracts flies, ants, and even rodents. If you've ever spilled molasses, you know how quickly it can become a magnet for unwanted visitors. There's also a serious but less common risk, botulism. If an animal carcass, like a bird or mouse, falls into an open molasses tank, it creates the perfect environment for Clostridium botulinum bacteria. These bacteria produce one of the deadliest toxins known. If contaminated molasses is fed to cattle, it can be fatal. That's why it's important to store molasses safely and buy blocks or tubs from reputable suppliers. Molasses doesn't mold as easily as grains, but if it's exposed to moisture, it can ferment or spoil. Spoiled molasses may smell sour, lose its sweetness, and be less safe for livestock. Proper storage is key to preventing waste and health risks. So as you can see, molasses is not risk-free, from nutritional imbalances to digestive problems and even botulism, farmers must use it carefully. But the good news is there are best practices that can help you feed molasses safely and effectively. Let's go over those next. Molasses should never replace your main feed. A good rule of thumb is to limit it to about 5 to 10% of the animal's total dry matter intake. For example, if a cow eats 20 kilograms of feed in a day, only about 1 to 2 kilograms of that should come from molasses. This keeps the diet balanced and prevents digestive upsets. Animals need time to adjust. If you start feeding molasses, introduce it gradually over 7 to 10 days. This gives the microbes in the rumen, or the gut in horses, time to adapt. If you dump in too much at once, you risk diarrhea or acidosis. Molasses comes in different forms, and the best choice depends on your setup. Liquid molasses, cheaper and easier to mix into total mixed rations, but you'll need special equipment like pumps or heated tanks in cold areas. Blocks or tubs, these are much safer for small-scale farmers. Animals lick them slowly, which naturally limits intake. Many are fortified with minerals, vitamins, and even medications, making them more than just a sugar source. Species-specific advice. Cattle, widely used and effective. Watch intake levels closely to avoid acidosis. Sheep and goats can benefit from molasses, but because they're smaller, their intake must be more carefully controlled. Horses use very sparingly. Horses are extremely sensitive to sugar overload, which can trigger laminitis. That's why molasses is usually only added in small amounts to commercial horse feeds to improve taste. Pigs and poultry can eat small amounts, but molasses is less common in their diets. In poultry, too much molasses can cause sticky droppings and wet litter, which leads to hygiene issues in the barn. So what's the bottom line? Molasses can be a very useful tool in livestock feeding. It makes rough feeds more appealing, 
provides quick and affordable energy, and even helps reduce feed waste. But it's not a complete feed, it's mostly sugar, and too much of it can cause serious problems like digestive upsets, acidosis, or laminitis in horses. The key is balance. Use molasses in moderation, introduce it gradually, and always combine it with protein, fiber, and minerals. Store it properly and choose the form, liquid, block, or tub that best fits your farm's setup. When managed correctly, molasses isn't just a sweet treat. It's a practical, cost-effective supplement that can support healthier, more productive livestock. Have you ever tried feeding molasses to your animals? What worked for you and what challenges did you face? Share your experience in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more practical livestock insights.